Please be joined with Chris Sims. Chris, I know you obviously are uh, pretty familiar with a lot of the quarterbacks in the yep. National Football League. Right. You said some things on the Trevor Lawrence front as he prepares to enter year four of that rookie deal. What are your expectations for Trevor coming off of last season? Well, my expectations are a better year, right? Trevor Lawrence has superstar talent. I mean, we saw that at you know, the end of the, what was that, 2022 season, right? Uh, halfway through the year. He started playing at a level where I went, uh oh, watch out. I mean, it's game changing throws. You know, for his size and uh, you know, for his size, his athleticism is astounding when you see it in person, right? He was clutch in big moments at the end of the game. He was bringing them back. Uh, last year, listen, they hit a little bit of a lull. Whether it was drops, you guys couldn't run the ball. That was an issue, right? He was probably, arguably, the most banged up quarterback in football, right? I think he'd be the first to tell you that wasn't his best year. Made some bad decisions and turnovers and some big moments, right? But man, I'd be shocked if Trevor Lawrence doesn't bounce back in a big way. I just, being around the guy enough now, right, and I've been around him a few times, um, he, he's got the mental fortitude and the leadership and the right attitude where I just go, he ain't buckling, he ain't, this ain't, this ain't, he's not going to like buckle under the pressure and whittle away here. You know, I see greatness in Trevor Lawrence and, you know, and then with a coach who I think sees the same thing, I'd be shocked that he didn't, who I know can bring it out of him. So I think you have a big bounce back here with Trevor. What was the biggest problem with the offense wherever the Jaguars need to go? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I think the, the run game was really the biggest issue. Your offensive line wasn't the same as the year before. And the fact that, you know, there was never anything you could rely on with Travis Etienne on a consistent basis running the football, uh, I think, one, of course, that hurts. It hurts now the ability to slow down the defensive line and the pass rush. And now defenses start to play a little bit of like, hey, they don't run the ball that good. Let's just worry about stopping the pass, right? And I think that affected their ability to maybe take some shots down the field and get people open down that way, right? That was one of the things during the year I kind of kept saying. I was like, they got to keep coming up with ways to – get shots down the field, one, because Trevor can throw it really well deep. But the other thing is just because, you know, the run game wasn't allowing them to do play action. Oh, oh now the safeties are up, and boom, we're going over the top, right? So uh, I was kind of like, hey, they got to draw it up in the dirt here and come up with creative ways. But I think it all is kind of based around the O-line of the run game. You fix the offensive line, you fix the run game. Yeah. You don't need to change the play caller? Or do you think, do you buy this buzz in the fan base that the play caller may have been part of the issue? Well, I, I, I don't, you know, listen, the play, I don't think it was their greatest year last year, but I think it was more the things we mentioned already that affected that, right? I think that's the big thing. And, you know, I've always liked, you know, Taylor, Press Taylor, Doug Peterson's offense. If I was going to say one thing that I'd go, hey, I'd like to see more of, it kind of is along the same lines of what I just said, Right. I'd love to see a little bit more game-planned aggressiveness to go down the football field. Because when I watch Jacksonville, I go, man, they got a lot of ways to throw it 5, 10, 15 yards and do all that. But, you know, we need some more ways. Like, you know, we've seen Mahomes in his primer, Josh Allen, push the ball down the field, open the field up a little bit, make the defense defend the whole field. I, if I was going to be critical in one area, that would be it. With the 17th overall pick, Ooh. the Jacksonville Jaguars select. It's hard for me right now. You know, and I, I mean, again, I'm not deep into this process, right? I, if you came to me in a month, I'd have a much better feel for all of it. But when I think of Jacksonville right now, you know, again, I think we get back to the O-line conversation. I certainly could see that, right? I think pass rusher, you know, could be another aspect. You look at that over there. And, uh, eh, gosh, I think those are the two positions I probably would hit more than anything. Yeah, I mean, receiver, you might want to add to the group, but I don't think it's a glaring need like, oh, man, we got to have a first rounder. I don't look at it that way. I think it's kind of up front on both sides of the ball. How about the cornerback situation? Yeah. We heard Trent Baalke say on Tuesday, you know, that they need a third corner. Yeah. We know they're about sure. to take the stage here, the value of those guys in the yeah. first round. I think it's kind of got some depth to it, maybe not superstars, but – yeah, yeah. I mean, again, in the NFL right now, like you just saw the Kansas City Chiefs. They got two all pros, basically, in Sneed and uh, McDuffie, basically, in, the, in their secondary. You got it. You got to have some talent there. Right now, when I look at it, like I like Darius Williams. He can play out there. I love um, Tyson. Tyson. I love Tyson, right? Like, love him. To me, he's special. And when he's healthy, he's one of the few guys in football. I go, ooh, Tyson Campbell on an island can cover anybody right 
But that third guy, it is important. I mean, we know most teams are playing three wide receiver sets and doing all that. So I don't know if that's going to be a first round type of thing there, but I certainly could see them doing that second, third round for sure. Last one from me. Ryan Nielsen comes over from Atlanta. What do you know about Ryan? What can Jaguar fans expect from him? Yeah, you know, I don't know a ton about Ryan, but I know that, you know, that side of the ball there, I'm a, I was a fan of Atlanta's defense and what they did, right? Uh, I think they're creative, they're game plan specific, right? There's thinking outside the box where I'd turn on the film, and I think that's where, you know, it's very important to be able to think outside the box and have some versatility in your attack. The quarterbacks are too good now to be going like, oh, we're going to play this and just be really good at it. You're going to get torn apart if you do that. So uh, that's where I think I like Ryan Nelson. When I would turn on Falcon film, I'd go, damn, they, this is totally different than how they played last week, and I think that's going to be cool. Yeah. Awesome. Chris, thanks so much. Anytime.